as we do often on Wednesdays. <laughs> it's time for us to catch up with former Ohio State head man Urban Meyer. Coach, this is the first time in 115 years the Big Ten has had four teams start the year at 6-0. and What does that say about the top of this league and how dominant teams like Ohio State and Wisconsin have been to date? Well, I think it's great for the conference. You know, there's a couple of surprises in there. Uh, you know, with Minnesota, and, and I think Coach Flex done a great job, but we all got to remember that Minnesota is a good program. That was not a complete rebuild. There were some issues, and but I remember in 14 we played them uh, when Jerry Kill was a coach, and he had some great, you know, some very good teams. Tracy Clay's had some very good teams. And, uh, you know, this is, uh, I, I, I've always looked at Minnesota as a good program. I've never looked at them as a complete rebuild. Uh, Wisconsin had a great rally from what they uh, started a year ago, and who'd have thought they'd have as many shutouts and playing the way they are, and Ohio State's had a great run. So it's, uh, it's very good for the conference. Coach, you mentioned Minnesota, and that's a team that's really been fascinating to me because, as you mentioned, it was not a complete rebuild. This is a team that's been able to win games, been able to compete. How difficult can you does it seem to be when you're trying to come in and establish your own culture, which P.J. Fleck has done, but you're still trying to continue to win games the way they've won them in years past, but it looks like they've changed the, in total direction in which way they've gone? Yeah, that's a great question, Howard, and, and uh, I can only compare it to when I went to Bowling Green, it was a complete rebuild. Then you went to with, uh, Utah, and it was not. They, you know, they had a coach, Ron McBride, that was a good team and, uh, you know, surfaced on being a great team. And then went to Florida, they were a good team. And then, I, you know, I take over for Jim Truss and Luke Fickle, and those are not good coaches. Those are great coaches. And so you just try to, first, first thing you do is show respect for the previous staff and previous players and, and learn from what they, because they were there, you know, and, and so I'm not sure exactly how Coach Fleck has done it, but, you know, once again, that's, I've always had, I've never looked at Minnesota as a team or a program that needed a complete uh, uh, changeover. I just, I've always had respect. I think they've always had good players, um, at least in, in, the, in recent years. Coach, I find Penn State to be a fascinating, unbeaten. Two years ago, Saquon Barkley leaves, and last year everybody's asking how can they replace Barkley. This year there's no Trace McSorley in the question, how do they replace a quarterback who was simply a winner? Sean Clifford's been solid. Penn State has been unbeaten. They have a big matchup with Michigan coming this week, and we'll get to that in a second. But what has impressed you about what Penn State has accomplished so far this year? Well, I think defensively we all expected them to be good. I, I'm surprised on offense as well because you know the thoughts I have. It's been well documented the respect I had for Trace McSorley. And, and when you lose the, you know, last year's running back and then uh, obviously Barkley, you know, I just didn't know if they had someone that would come up through the ranks. So uh, I'm not sure how they've been tested yet. You know, I, this will be a good test because the Wolverine defense is obviously very strong. Uh, but you knew they played good defense. I'm just impressed with Clifford. And uh, Hamler is, uh, you know, he took one, shoot, about 80 yards against us year ago. So we, uh, I just think they have very good skill. But I, I am a little bit surprised by their offensive production. When you put up big numbers the way they have been and talking about Penn State, are there other areas when you look at that team that they can continue to grow? Yeah, it's all going to be when the, when the competition gets equated with them. And, uh, you know, they had a couple close games. I want to say uh, Pitt was a very close game. But uh, it's all, this This will tell a lot. Obviously, they got the whiteout. And the best thing about the whiteout is I don't have to be there this week. Uh, <laughs> but it, facing this defense, this is going to tell you a lot about their offense. You'll know, we'll know more after this week. And Urban, couldn't we say the same thing on the other side of the ball, that for Michigan, or you'll refer to them as the team up north, who have had some offensive struggles, we'll know a lot about their offense as they go to play a really good Penn State defense this week. Yeah, their, their offense is, you know, it's, it's about time now. And I made the comment preseason that when you have a wholesale transition of offense, it takes four or five, six weeks. Uh, you've had those. So now it's time for production. And, you know, this is a difficult place, man. You, now you've got the... The snap count issues, the logistical issues of being on the road in that environment, which I, by the way, think is the toughest environment in, in the country. Uh, this will be a tough one to get that offense back on track, but it, it's time now. Coach, you've played in some hostile environments uh, when you were at Florida, obviously, and also with at Ohio State. How do you prepare a team 
to go into an environment that, uh, you know, the home team has the advantage? Well, you know, the players know now because I think we played, shoot, we played in four of them in the last seven years. And, and I'm telling you, that, that, there's no getting used to that one. There's other ones that you can kind of, you know, get ready for. But you, you do this, you know, the typical crowd noise and work on it and try to get their minds right. But once you're in that, that setting, and that's a lot of credit to their student body and just the way they orchestrate that whole environment, that, that is, it's, that's awful. That's a tough place to go play games. So you can try to get them ready. The best way to get them ready, as our strength coach would say, pack your run defense, uh, run the ball, uh, and bring your toughest. And the other thing is I, I tell people there's two things in those kind of games, and I said this last week too, that a block punt and a sack are the loudest I've ever heard stadiums. And so do your best, help your quarterback, don't allow sacks, get the ball out, and for you know protect that punter. Because those are the two areas when you see a stadium completely come unglued.